welcome to Anupma Biology classes. Myself Anupma, I am MSc Beard, I am MSc in Georgie Gold Medalist. I love teaching and that's why we are here today. Today I am going to show you how to make your biology lessons interactive. This is my first video and today's lecture we will be starting with Human Physiology Introduction. You know the smallest unit of our body is cell and cell is made up of different type of organelles like ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body, nucleus, mitochondria and so on. So these organelles combine to form cells, cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, organs combine to form organ system and organ system combine to form a whole body. The study of human body involves anatomy, physiology, histology and embryology. Here we will talk about the human physiology. Human physiology is the science of mechanical, physical and biochemical function of humans and serves as the foundation of modern medicine. Physiology is made up of two words. First one is the physis that means nature and second is the logos that means the study. So physiology is the scientific study of functions and mechanism in a living system. On the basis of classes of organism, physiology is divided into different fields like medical physiology in which we study about the function of internal organs, animal physiology in which we study about the mechanical, physical and biochemical process of living organism, plant physiology in which we study about the fundamental processes in plants, cell physiology in which we study about the biological activities that takes place in a cell to keep it alive. Hominal physiology is largely restricted to the normal functions of human body. Comparative physiology is a subdiscipline of physiology that studies and expolites the diversity of functional characteristics of various kinds of organisms. So, in case of the comparative physiology, we compare two different organisms on the basis of their function. Now, parts of human physiology. Human physiology is divided into the different parts. First one is the digestive system. Second is the respiratory system. Third is the circulatory system, fourth is the excretory system, fifth is locomotor system, seven, sixth is uh, nervous system and seventh is endocrine system. So here we will discuss on all these topics in short. So first one is the digestive system. Now you can see the picture. This is the whole digestive system of the human body. Digestive system. What is digestive system? So, digestive system is used in the human body for the process of digestion. It is divided into the two parts. First one is the gastrointestinal tract, in short you can say GIT and second is the accessory organs. Gastrointestinal tract starts from the mouth and completes on anus. So, between mouth and anus, there are different organs like pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine are present which help in the process of digestion. And second is the accessory organs. Accessory organs are help in the process of digestion. So these organs secrete different kinds of enzymes and digestive juice which help in the process of digestion. These organs are liver, pancreas and gallbladder. Digestion involves the breakdown of large components of food into smaller and smaller components until they can be absorbed and assimilated into the body. Digestion is of two types. First one is the mechanical digestion which involves physically breakdown of food into smaller pieces and it starts from the mouth. And second is the chemical digestion which involves breaking down the food into simpler nutrients that can be used by the cells. Now, respiratory system. Respiration is the exchange of environmental oxygen with the carbon dioxide produced in the cells during oxidation at the moist surface. This process generally involves intake of molecular oxygen from the environment, stepwise oxidation of food with the incoming oxygen, elimination of carbon dioxide produced in oxidation, release of energy in small doses during oxidation and conservation of energy so released in biologically useful form such as ATP. The human respiratory system is a series of organs responsible for taking in O2 and expelling CO2. So now you can see the picture here the respiratory system in human beings is divided into the two parts. 
first one is the upper respiratory tract uh, in which nasal cavity pharynx and larynx are present and second is the lower respiratory tract in which trachea bronchi and lungs are present lungs are the primary respiratory organ of the human being because in case of the lungs alveoli are present which help in the process of respiration that means gaseous exchange occurs inside the lungs so the surface at which the exchange of gases occur is known as the respiratory surface respiration is of two types on the basis of their habitats and the level of organization first is the aerobic respiration where the oxygen is required for the respiration and second is the anaerobic respiration where oxygen is not required for the respiration now circulatory system circulation of body fluids is called circulatory system circulatory system is also known as the internal transport so what is body fluids body fluids in our body are two types first one is the blood and second is the lymph that help in the transport of various substances in our body circulation is of two types first one is the intracellular circulation and second is the extracellular circulation according to the name it's clear that in the intracellular circulation circulation occur inside the cell so it occurs only in case of the unicellular organism like paramecium amoeba euglena etc and the extracellular circulation occurs outside the cell so it occurs in the multicellular organism like vertebrates circulatory system does a very important job in our body it carries o2 and essential nutrients to all cells around the body in arteries and carries the waste product and co2 in veins so the main materials that transport in our bodies are nutrients gases hormones waste material and molecules and cells the arteries and veins which is responsible for the complete circulation is known as the blood circulation or blood vascular system and it is of two types open circulatory system closed circulatory system open circulatory system occurs in arthropods and most mollusks like snails and the closed circulatory system found in annelids such as ferritima this is the zoological name of earthworm certain mollusks and all vertebrates like cetia the cuttlefish now excretory system the excretory system is a passive biological system that removes excess unnecessary materials from the body fluid of an organism so as to help maintain internal chemical homeostasis and prevent damage to the body there are many excretory wastes are present in our body like the nitrogenous waste co2 mineral salts water pigments vitamins and hormones spices and drugs etc so the organism that help in the process of excretion is known as the excretory organs and the excretory organs is divided into the two parts primary excretory organ or major excretory organs and secondary excretory organ in our body kidneys are the primary or major excretory organs and after that there are many other organs are also present that help in the process of excretion these are liver skin lungs large intestine etc like liver help in the breakdown of excess amino acid skin helps in the process of elimination of excess salt and water lungs help in the excel of water vapor and co2 and the large intestine help in the elimination of solid waste so these are the secondary respiratory excretory organs human excretory system consists of a pair of kidneys a pair of ureters a urinary bladder a urethra so now you can see the picture here two kidney being shaped structures are present from the kidney ureter or arises which completes on urinary, urinary bladder here the urine is stored and from the urinary bladder urethra is present which is responsible for excrete the urine from the body now the locomotor system it is also known as the musculoskeletal system the human musculoskeletal system is an organ system that gives human the ability to move using their muscular and skeletal systems the musculoskeletal system provides form support stability and movement to the body 
Movements in animals are of the two main types. First one is the non-muscular movements and second is the muscular movements. Non-muscular movements like uh, protoplasmic streaming, pseudopodial movement, flagellar movement and ciliary movement. But in case of the muscular movements are brought about by the sliding of myofilaments part each other in the muscle fibers. It is found in the majority of animals. So what is movement? Movement is the act of changing place or position by the entire body or by one or more of its parts. Movement may occur at the cellular level, at the organ level or at the organism level. If we talk about at the cellular level, for instance, uh, cytoplasmic streaming and swimming of gametes. Or at the organ level, like heartbeat and the rotation of fibers. At the organism level, swimming of the fishes, flying of birds and walking of humans, etc. A study of movement is called kinesiology. In Greek, kinesian means uh, to move and the logos means a study. So, kinesiology is the branch of science that deals with the study of movement of organism. Now, the nervous system. The nervous system is a highly complex part of an animal that uh, coordinates its action and sensory information by transmitting signals to and from different parts of its body. The nervous system detects environmental changes that impact the body. Then work is in tandem with the endocrine system to respond to such events. So in our body, there are many neurons are present and these neurons are known as the smallest unit of nervous system. These neurons combine to form a complete nervous system which is responsible for controlling the, or sending the electrical signals and these electrical signals are nerve impulses. The nervous system consists of neurons, nerve fibers, nerve, neuroglia, epidermal cells and neurosecretory cells. And the last is endocrine system. The endocrine system is a chemical messenger system comprising feedback loops of the hormones released by internal glands of an organism directly into the circulatory system regulating distant target organs. So, uh, for the endocrine system, glands are required. So, what is glands? Glands are a cell, a tissue or an organ which secretes certain useful chemical compounds required for the particular functions in our body. In animals, there are three types of glands are present. Exocrine glands, endocrine glands and heterocrine glands. Exocrine glands are also known as duct glands and like uh, sebaceous glands in the skin, gastric gland in the stomach wall and liver are the exocrine glands. Endocrine glands are also known as ductless gland. Their secretions are known as hormones like pituitary gland, thyroid gland, thymus, etc. And heterocrine glands, it consists of both exocrine gland and endocrine gland like pancreas and gonads. So, the function of heterocrine glands are like both exocrine and endocrine. The study of endocrine glands and role of their secretions is called endocrinology. In Greek, endon means within, crinine means to separate and logos means to study. So, endocrinology is the branch of science that deals with the study of endocrine glands, their role and functioning in our body. So, in today's lecture, we basically know about what is human physiology and its part. We will be continuing with more lecture on human physiology. You can stay tuned with the lecture series to get more knowledge about the human physiology. Subscribe to the channel. Anupma Biology Classes for more such, uh, such tutorials on various biology topics. Thank you for watching the video. Let us know in the comment section below how did you find this video and like and share if you understood this lecture. If you have any questions related to biology or you want uh, such videos on any biology topic, you can ask in the comment section below. Thank you so much.